10. The Whale Graveyard Sometimes you need to be at the right place at the right time. In 2022, Alex Dawson, a Swedish photographer, won a scuba diving underwater photo contest with this image of an eerie whale graveyard. Dawson and a scuba companion explored an area known as the Skinning Grounds off the coast of Greenland. At one time, indigenous hunters in Greenland hunted the mink whale. These whales can be as long as 35 feet and weigh some 20,000 pounds. The Inuit skinned the whales to their bones, which were then taken by the waters during high tide. The bones in this image were some 15 to 20 feet below the water. In order to capture his prize-winning image, Dawson swam under three feet of pack ice for over an hour in below freezing water temperatures. He and his companion found the remains of 20 whales. The dive was no easy feat because the only way in the water was through what he described as a human-shaped hole in the ice. Dawson was surprised to find the whale bones at that depth. Some whale graveyards are at a depth of 5,000 feet. Do you find this discovery incredibly fascinating or creepy? 9. The Key West Hospital and Cemetery In May 2023, divers near Key West, Florida discovered a cemetery and the remains of a 19th century quarantine hospital that was once part of Fort Jefferson. Construction of Fort Jefferson began in 1846. It was supposed to be a key fort to allow ships from the Gulf of Mexico and the Straits of Florida to get supplies, stop for needed repairs, or to seek refuge from storms. Other services provided by the fort included a naval coaling outpost, lighthouse station, naval hospital, and quarantine facility. During the Civil War, Fort Jefferson was used to house prisoners, but it was closed as a fort in 1873. However, the fort was put to use again around 1890. Before it sank into the ocean, the fort hospital treated patients with yellow fever from 1890 to 1900. Yellow fever is a disease that is spread by mosquitoes. Those infected experience dreadful pain, headaches, vomiting, and more. If not properly treated, yellow fever leads to death. Over time, the hospital settled and eroded to a variety of environmental factors. At the time this video was created, one grave in the cemetery has been identified. It was for a civilian named John Greer, who died while serving as a laborer at the fort in 1861. Others buried at the cemetery are believed to be U.S. soldiers, but researchers are still trying to figure that out. 8. The Gulf of Combat Lost City In the year 2000, archaeological remains were found in the Gulf of Combat off the coast of India by their National Institute of Ocean Technology. Once known as the Gulf of Cambay, the discovery found 120 feet underwater may prove the existence of a city from over 9,000 years ago. Pottery, wall sections, human bones, and construction material were some of the items recovered from the site. This discovery predates the Harappan civilization of India, which dates back some 4,000 years. This discovery has baffled scientists, historians, and archaeologists. What is also interesting about the time that this city flourished was that it was a point in time when humans went from hunting and gathering to farming. Pottery use and the domestication of animals were also common at the time of the lost city. Could this be one of the first large communities created by the shift to farming? To their knowledge, cities of the size of what was discovered in the Gulf of Kambat did not exist more than 4,500 years ago. So how did this city become submerged? One theory is that it was the result of ice caps melting during the last portion of the Ice Age, roughly 9,000 to 10,000 years ago. What do you think? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 7. The Giant Crucifix in Lake Michigan Did you know that there's an 11-foot tall crucifix that was placed in Lake Michigan? Off the shores of Petoskey in the lower peninsula of Michigan is the crucifix. It's 800 feet from the shore under 21 feet of water. So how did it get there? Tragedy struck a Michigan family during the 1950s when one of their children was tragically killed in a gun-related accident on their farm. The family commissioned the construction of a crucifix in the child's memory. It was made in Italy and shipped to Michigan. However, during the shipment, the crucifix was damaged and the family rejected it. Instead, it was to be sold at an insurance auction. 
The crucifix was purchased by a Michigan dive club. That dive club decided to place it in Lake Michigan in 1962 in the memory of a diver that died in a drowning accident. A ceremony was held and a ship took the crucifix out and placed it in the water. However, the dive club later decided to make it a monument for those who died in Lake Michigan. Since 1986, people have been able to view the crucifix, especially in the winter. When the ice on Lake Michigan becomes thick enough to stand on, only then is it safe for them to travel out to a spot to see it under the ice. A tent is usually placed on the ice to mark the spot where visitors can go and view the crucifix. Would you walk across the frozen lake to see the crucifix? 6. Sea of Galilee Discovery The Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake in Israel. It is an important location in the New Testament because it's the spot where Jesus Christ did many of his teachings. In 2003, researchers made a fascinating discovery there while surveying the lake with sonar equipment. Under some 30 feet of water was a circular structure that was the size of a Boeing 747 jet. When scientists were able to get a better look at what they found, they discovered it was a cone-shaped structure that was 32 feet tall with a 230-foot base. Estimates on the weight of the structure are at 60,000 tons. So what was it? What was it used for? It might have been a ceremonial structure or an ancient calendar. The structure at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee has been compared to the famous Stonehenge prehistoric monument. So how did it end up at the bottom of the ocean? Scientists have been trying to figure that out since the discovery. It could have been submerged by the lake. Dating the structure has also been somewhat difficult. Estimates date the structure from a conservative 2,000 years old to a possible date of 12,000 years ago. Whatever this structure was used for has both baffled and impressed scientists. 5. The Grand Traverse Bay Stonehenge Did you know there's a mini Stonehenge of sorts in the United States? It is in Lake Michigan at Grand Traverse Bay, outside of Traverse City, Michigan. Discovered in 2007 by archaeologists searching for shipwrecks, they discovered some unusual rocks during their dive and took some photos to examine later. When they took a closer look at the stones, they found that one had a petroglyph of a mastodon. Also, these rocks were placed in a circular fashion, and they could have been placed there some 9,000 years ago, where Grand Traverse Bay is today. That was at the end of the last ice age, so the region wasn't underwater yet. What is even more fascinating about this discovery is that it definitely predates Stonehenge by some 5,000 years. While the Grand Traverse Bay rocks are nowhere near the size of the Stonehenge megaliths, it is an interesting and curious find. 4. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald One of the most infamous and controversial shipwrecks of the Great Lakes was the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald on November 10, 1975. 29 men went down with the ship into Lake Superior. The incident occurred somewhere northwest of Whitefish Point, Michigan during a horrible storm. The ship launched in June 1958 and measured 729 feet. The Edmund Fitzgerald was the largest ship on the Great Lakes until 1971. The final mission of the Fitzgerald occurred on November 9, 1975 when it was scheduled to haul some iron ore from Wisconsin to Zug Island near Detroit. While on its journey, weather conditions on Lake Superior deteriorated. Gale warnings were issued, and the weather turned into a very scary situation for the crew. Hurricane force winds up to 90 miles per hour, with waves reported to be 35 feet slammed into the mighty Edmund Fitzgerald. Another ship on Lake Superior kept in contact with the Fitzgerald, but lost contact around 7.10 p.m. on November 10th. A search of the lake found two lifeboats from the ship, but no one in them. Sadly, the Fitzgerald was taken by Lake Superior and sank 535 feet below the surface. A U.S. Navy vessel was sent to the area to investigate the wreckage in May 1976. They were able to get video and images of the sunken ship. Three. The New Jersey Train Graveyard Off the New Jersey coast, two rare locomotive train engines from the 1850s are resting 90 feet below the surface. They may have met their fate during a storm that hit Long Branch, New Jersey. It's rumored that the locomotives were being transported on a barge from Boston at the time. 
They might have been pushed off the barge by a crew to lighten the load, or they could have fallen in due to the rough waters caused by the storm. In 1985, a scuba diver named Paul Helper was using a magnetometer to map the ocean bottom near Long Branch. They picked up on something huge and found the two locomotives. They were identified as Class 222T locomotives that were used in train yards for general work. Although they're covered with barnacles, these locomotives are upright in the ocean and are very close to each other in this cool but unusual train graveyard. Two. The Yonaguni Monument, a fascinating and controversial discovery, was made off of Yonaguni Island near Taiwan during the 1980s. The discovery was made when a scuba diver was hoping to observe hammerhead sharks in the area. That's when the diver made a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. They thought they found the ruins of an ancient city and a pyramid-like structure. A rectangular rock structure measuring some 165 feet long and 65 feet wide is believed to be the ruins of a ziggurat in an ancient city from roughly 5,000 to 10,000 years ago. This discovery has also been referred to as the Japanese Atlantis. The inhabitants of the island were the prehistoric Jomon. Others disagree and state the formation was naturally created. They claim it matches natural formations like the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Both are believed to be interlocking basalt columns, which were the result of volcanic eruptions millions of years ago. Images of what is known as the Yonaguni Monument show step-like features. These are not simple walking steps, but steps that are several feet apart. Also, one of the arguments against this being man-made is the fact that something of this size would have required a large, well-fed population with the skills and tools necessary to complete the task. Sadly, this wasn't the case over 5,000 years ago. But how did the Yonaguni Monument end up under the ocean? One theory is that an earthquake devastated the region some 2,000 years ago. What do you think? 1. The Antikythera Mechanism Of all the items on our list, this is the only one that has been retrieved from the water. The Antikythera Mechanism was developed by ancient Greeks to calculate information related to astronomical phenomena. It was 1901 when the Antikythera mechanism was taken from the wreckage of a ship that had sunk in the Mediterranean Sea many, many years ago. A diver that had discovered the wreckage thought they also found dead bodies, but they were nothing more than marble sculptures. The mechanism itself is the size of a shoebox, and it might have been built sometime around the second century. Also, what was salvaged eventually broke apart while being inspected by museum officials in Athens, Greece. However, the mechanism eventually fragmented into 82 pieces. What makes this discovery incredibly fascinating is due to the estimated 30 gears in the mechanism. It is because of those gears that makes the Antikythera mechanism one of the most complex instruments of the ancient world. This amazing device allowed ancient Greeks to regulate calendars, and it even provided them with information regarding lunar or solar eclipses. The Antikythera mechanism has been x-rayed and has been scanned by a computerized tomography CT. It has allowed researchers to know more about the mechanism, and it has allowed some to develop models of the Antikythera mechanism. Thanks for watching. What was your favorite discovery on our list? Do you have a favorite creepy underwater discovery? If so, comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.